Hey, what's up guys, Jagan Tech here. And as you may know, Apple just dropped a ton of new software updates in WWDC a few days ago. We got iPadOS 15, macOS Monterey, watchOS 8, and of course the most popular one of all, iOS 15. This year it's another minor upgrade visually, I should say, but iOS 15 just happens to be a lot bigger and better than you might think. Because almost all the changes are baked so deep into Apple's apps and services that you just can't see them right off the bat. But as you continue to use your phone more, then that's when you start to see that it's a pretty significant update. So here is everything new about iOS 15. Starting off with the biggest update of all, FaceTime. FaceTime is about to get so big this year that it can actually go head to head with major video call platforms such as Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and Google Meet. The biggest new feature is called SharePlay, which lets you watch movies or TV shows with your friends and family seamlessly. You can also listen to music during a call and even share your screen with the person you're talking to. And what makes this really special is no matter what you're streaming, playback and controls will always be in sync with every device in the call. If someone pauses, fast forwards, or stops the movie, it will happen for everybody else in real time. For now, Apple has partnered with a good number of streaming services, such as Disney+, Hulu, HBO Max, TikTok, and more. But I'm sure some of you are still looking for Netflix and Spotify somewhere. So thanks to the SharePlay API, more services like Netflix can always hop on this feature soon, and you'll be able to enjoy this during your FaceTime calls. And in case you were wondering, yes, everybody in the call must be subscribed to the same service in order for SharePlay to work. Second, FaceTime is now made available to Android and Windows users, all thanks to FaceTime links. So this will make it easier for a lot of people to reach out to their friends and family who own Android or Windows devices. I also find the entire setup so much easier than Zoom because all you need to do is just tap on create link in the FaceTime app, send them out, and they'll be able to join your call with no login necessary. All they need to do is just go to the link that you sent, enter their name, and they're in the call. The only thing is the FaceTime app will not be coming to these operating systems, so you're basically only limited to joining a call. You will not be able to create your own call if you're using Android or Windows. Some visual and audio changes have also been added to FaceTime, such as Grid View, which is a better way to interact if you have a lot of people in a call. You also have different mic modes now, such as voice isolation, which basically filters out all of the background noise in your area, and white spectrum, which does the complete opposite and absorbs all of the background noise in your environment. Portrait mode is also now in FaceTime, so you can now blur your entire background and have all the focus on you. And one thing Apple didn't tell us is we can actually use the same portrait mode for all our Snapchat and Instagram stories as well. And speaking of features that weren't stated in the event, there's now system-wide drag and drop. So basically you can now hold, drag any link, file or photo and drop it on any text field. You may choose to keep it in your notes, send it as a message, an email, or even a tweet. And just a small detail, the settings UI is also different this time. As you can see, every section is now presented in this rounded box, and the options no longer stretch all the way to the ends of the screen. Next, we have a whole new look and system for notifications. The icons now are much bigger, so it'll be easier for you to identify where it's from. And you will also receive them in a much smaller banner compared to older versions of iOS which is great because it'll be taking up less of your screen and it won't be so distracting anymore. Notifications are also easier to manage thanks to notification summary. Basically, you can now place the notifications from apps that you least prioritize into one group. The way this works is you go to notification settings, go to summary, and here you can set how many times it will show up, change the time of day, and even choose the apps that you want to include in that summary. So when you wake up the next day, you no longer have to go through every single notification. Instead, you now have that group or summary that you can always open up anytime. And you still have the important ones displayed as you would normally receive them. And you now have the option to mute your notifications temporarily without having to go into the app itself. Now, speaking of muting things out, we have a whole new feature called Focus, in which you'll be able to filter out all the apps and notifications that you don't want to engage with during a period of time. So let's say you're busy with work and you don't want to get any distractions from your social media apps. You can just turn on your work focus and all the apps and notifications related to your work will be the only ones that will appear on your phone. You can also customize each focus by choosing the people who are allowed to get through, apps that will display their notifications, and you can even choose specific pages in your home screen that you only want to use when the focus is turned on. So let's say I just choose this one page for my personal focus, I'll tap on done, turn it on, and now I only have one page in my home screen. In this case, you can create different home screen pages tailored for different focuses. One page dedicated to work, another page for fitness, personal life, or even gaming. 
And what's cool is that you'll be able to see if you have a focus turned on thanks to the icon found beside the clock or in your lock screen. Now, people who will try to contact you will get a notification in messages saying that you are currently in a focus. And if they do send you a message, it will only be delivered to you once you turn off that focus. But if they really need to get through, they can always set it as an urgent message. So I guess we can say that focus is somewhat a customizable version of Do Not Disturb which is something I really like. And if you happen to have other Apple devices like an iPad, MacBook, or an Apple Watch, the focus set on one device will reflect on all your other devices as well. Next is a feature called Live Text. And what this does is it detects words or numbers in your photos and you will be able to interact with these elements. So basically, if you open up your camera and point it to a surface that has some text on it, just tap on the icon at the bottom and it will automatically scan the text and you'll be able to select it just how you would normally do on your iPhone. You can choose to copy it, select all, look it up, or even get a translation. If you want to copy an entire list, you can always choose text from camera. And all you need to do is just point the camera to what you want to copy, and it will instantly show up on your text field. The same thing goes for existing photos in your gallery, whether it's a screenshot or something that you took, you'll be able to scroll along the text just like that. Also, if there's a phone number that you want to call, you can also select that part and immediately call the number straight from your Photos app. The science behind live text can also be used to identify other things such as dog breeds, types of flowers, pieces of art, and landmarks. As you can see, I have a photo of my dog over here, and all I have to do is just scroll up, tap on the paw icon, and it will immediately tell me what kind of breed he is. Now, if you've ever used Google Lens before, this is basically the same thing. This has been in Android phones for quite some time now, and not only does Google Lens detect words, but can also detect any object and give you information about that object. It's still way more advanced when it comes to results, but I kind of like the setup of live text more, just because it's baked into the camera app of the iPhone and you don't need to download any third-party app just to use the feature. Messages in Memoji have also received an update this year. There is now a new feature called Shared With You, in which when someone sends you a link, photo, or an article through messages, it will reflect on the Shared With You section of the corresponding app. So if someone shares a link from Safari or a song from Apple Music, it will automatically show up inside those apps. And while you're at it, you can also see a summary of everything has been sent to you, where you can tap on the sender's icon to continue your conversation from there. Next, instead of receiving multiple photos one by one in messages, you will now receive a photo collection that you can just simply scroll through to see all the photos. You also have the option to save the entire collection all at once or open it in a grid view in order to have a better look at all the photos. For Memoji, there are now new accessories as well as different hairstyles and eye colors, so creating a very personalized and accurate Memoji is going to be a lot better in iOS 15. Now, one of the biggest visual changes we got is in Safari. This year, Safari will have an entirely new look across iPhones, iPads, and Macs, and navigating through the app is just so much better now in iOS 15. There's now a new start page that is fully customizable. You can set the background to any image found here or even use a photo straight from your gallery. The search bar is now at the very bottom making it easier to reach and you can also pan through all your tabs using the search bar just by swiping left or right on it. And if you want to go to all your tabs, you can just swipe up on the search bar as if you were opening up your multitasking panel. But if that doesn't work for you, then you can always open up your tabs from the bottom right. And speaking of tabs, you can now create tab groups in Safari. So let's say you're planning for a trip or doing some research and you don't want to lose any of the websites that you have opened. You can just go to your tabs menu in Safari and you will be able to save all those sites as a group. And you can always open them later on when you need it. The weather app also gets a major redesign this year. Thanks to Apple's acquisition of Dark Sky, weather can now give you a more detailed and realistic view of weather conditions. Instead of having just the basic highs and lows, sunny or rainy graphics in the background, the weather app is now able to mirror the actual condition of your location. If it's sunset, it will show the sunset graphic, and if the sky is a bit purple, then it will show that. You also have access to new information such as wind direction, humidity levels, rainfall forecasts, and a live temperature map of the entire world. And speaking of the world, we also have some crazy updates to Apple Maps. But unfortunately, this will only be available in selected areas for now, but the improvements here are just too good not to talk about. Maps can now give you a 3D view of a city, just like what we have in Google Earth. But this actually looks better in my opinion. As you zoom in, you'll be able to see this well-animated 3D view of the landmarks. And if you're using dark mode, those places will be lit up as if it were nighttime, which I think is just really cool. The navigation in Apple Maps can also give you an extremely detailed view as you're driving along a road. It will show you the number of lanes, the traffic lights and crosswalks that you'll be running into, as well as freeway interchanges. And probably the coolest update in Apple Maps is immersive walking instructions. 
This is where you'll be able to scan your surroundings using AR, and your phone will be able to detect your location and give you floating directions towards your destination. Kind of like the stuff you see in video games. Pretty dope. Next, the Photos app now introduces a new way to interact with your old photos with memories and memory mixes. Memories is basic collection of photos and videos that were taken in the same time frame or display the same content, so it will now be easier for you to look back into some great events in the past. Memory mixes, on the other hand, turn all those memories into montages. There will also be a filter and some background music to heighten the experience, but you have the option to choose the song and the filter that you think will fit best with the memory being shown. And finally, we can now see more information about a photo when we swipe up. Everything from what device was used to take the photo, file type, ISO, focal length, resolution, and aperture. Probably not an important feature for the average consumer, but this will be really great for creators. Another feature that I hope will extend to more parts of the world is digital ID in the wallet app. In iOS 15, you will now be able to store your driver's license, state ID, house keys, hotel room keys, and car keys into wallet. And this will just make it so much easier to get through airport security, hotel parking lots, offices, and other establishments in the future. For now, only a few states and hotel chains have taken part of this, so it's just a matter of time before this completely changes your lifestyle. Spotlight Search has also made its way to the iPhone. Finally, with this, you will now get more substantial search results when it comes to celebrities, photos, contacts, or anything that you want to know about. And this is one of the things I've been wanting for so long, because the old search was honestly pretty useless for me, so now that we have Spotlight, it will be much easier and quicker to get the answers that we need. The AirTag has also gotten a very important update, and that is notifying the owner if they left an AirTag behind. And this is great, because you may know where to find your keys, but you might actually forget to take them with you. And AirPods Pro and AirPods Max can now also be tracked using the Find My app, just like you would do with an AirTag. And last but not the least, you will now be able to use Siri without any internet connection. So this makes Siri way more flexible and usable, and you no longer have to call her name out if you want to get a command done. This will be a great tool if you want Siri to turn on dark mode, set some alarms, open an application, and even send some text messages. And that is it for all the new updates in iOS 15. Another great year for upgrades, and if you think about it, there's a whole lot more customization now. So it seems like Apple's going towards the right direction here. Anyway, hope you guys liked the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.